This is Dolany TV, and ladies and gentlemen, as promised, we are back with Edmonton Oilers franchise mode in NHL 21. Now, my friends, before you get going, if you've missed episode one, you'd kind of get the overview as to what we were trying to set up for this franchise mode, the lines and all that. But guess what? If you missed episode one, don't worry about it because episode two, we've got a whole new situation going on here. I have since fired the head coach, played around with the line chemistry, and we have something special happening here with the Oilers. Last episode, you would have seen me struggle with line chemistry. Well, I figured out that is because our head coach had a 57% team fit. You move out of that head coach, you move him down to the goalie coach position or assistant coach position, and you move the associate coach in, and suddenly he's got a 71% team fit with the Edmonton Oilers as they currently are. So there you go, the brand new lines we will go rocking into the season with, featuring that huge plus three with Chase on, Dry Settle, and Yamamoto on the third line, or second line. My goodness, we're going to start off that terribly already. Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, and Pooley form the first line, and then Kazian, Turris, and Nygaard up there. And I'll show you why Pooley not on the third line. That is because it forms a zero where there really doesn't need to be a zero in this Oilers lineup. Now the defense as well. This was one we really struggled to figure out uh, last episode. Well, Tyson Berry, Adam Larson on the top pair get the job done. I'll show you, for instance, what happens here. It goes down to plus ones on both lines. So these two guys more than set for prime time as our top pairing of defensemen. Now that, as a regular Oilers fan, and I will talk about that uh, periodically in episodes, is the very scary reality. I mean, two right-hand shot defensemen and Tyson Berry and Adam Larson, I don't, I don't think that sounds very good to you or I. And then secondarily to that, Clefbaum and Darnell Nurse forming that plus three on the second pair. Jones and Bear forming a plus one. Last episode, we signed Bear. The details on the contract, $1.975 I didn't want to sit there and negotiate too long. That's a comfortable salary, especially if we can find a way to shed a salary going into the season. So that is where we have to find a trade and you look at this lineup and the way it's constructed is that leaves an odd man out and that leaves Josh Archibald, who's 76 overall, on the bench. Yes, he could fill in fine and dandy, but we got guys better than that in the farm system that can fill in than Josh Archibald. And again, I have my misgivings with how NHL 21 rates Josh Archibald, but that aside, we'll move forward and we will get right into, before we get the sim underway, we are going to go find a trading partner for Josh Archibald. So there's this awesome feature here called Find Trade, and you can get this going. And we did that with Jujar Kara to find the two sevens. We get all the way down here to, where is he? Josh Archibald. I want right wingers. I don't want to scroll all the way through everybody. Right wingers and Josh Archibald looking to be all the way down here, just a tick above Mr. James Neal. Now here's the thing, guys. Yeah, sure, we're trading away two depth pieces, but right there, you can't even find a trade for Josh Archibald at this point. So we'll stand pat, we'll move forward, and somebody will offer us something. One last thing we have to check is just the trade block, because I set it up for us as well, kind of show you what's going on. Mike Smith, Josh Archibald, James Neal, Alex Chase on Zach Kazian. If somebody wants to offer us something, paired with something in the 17 to 23 range on either forward or defense, and give us something defense-wise, goaltending-wise, to forward-wise, we would be good to go. So guys, if you're new to the channel as well, what I want you to do is hit that subscribe button. This is going to be a feature-length thing on Dolany TV here until the NHL season gets going in January. We regularly talk about the Oilers every single day. Today's earlier episode of discussion was on Zach Kazian and why the Oilers won't move Zach Kazian you know, out to free up cap space. We've talked about Juju Arcara. We've talked about Alex Chase on but Zach has in kind of one of the elephant in the room when it comes to freeing up cap space. So make sure you check that out as well. And we'll get to the AHL as soon as the season is ready to get started. I've tweaked the rules within the system here to try and get a little bit more scoring. So let's see just how the first five games of the preseason go. We are underway with the simulation. Vegas 4-3 win there. Vancouver 7-1 loss and a 5-2 win in the preseason. If you're new to NHL 21, 
as well, and NHL in general, what they do is a preseason consisting of all seven of your division opponents or whatever number of division opponents you have. So Connor McDavid, eight points in five games to get this going, and you're kind of going to see the impact of the lines. Alex Chase on up there with five points. Yes, Puliarvi with four, Nugent Hopkins with four, and Yamamoto in there with three. But the nice thing to see here all around is the shots, shots, shots from all our players so far in the lineup. That is great to see to start. And you look at the pairing too, right? Tyson Berry's already got two assists in a couple preseason games. So, yes, good to see things coming to fruition here early on in the season. Eh, yeah, might be the preseason, but we're not going to worry too much about that. Against the LA Kings, we get a 6-4 win, and then we go against the San Jose Sharks, players on waivers. I go through all this stuff rather quick. I don't need to explain it, I don't think. And a 5-4 loss to the San Jose Sharks. Now that the preseason is complete, would you like to assign our scouts? No, I've already done that. I've already set that up. We'll get to the draft class as soon as they showcase the draft class for the first time. So, what I'm going to ask you right now is what is special about this calendar schedule they have set up for us. Starting October 6th at the New Jersey Devils, then going October 11th against the Boston Bruins. That's a long layoff between games. Then the next second night next, going to New York, then stopping over in Winnipeg and being back home for four straight games. Well, if you would uh, remember back to the terrible year of 1819, that is why, my friends, this schedule looks the way it is. They are just recycling the 1819 calendar schedule for our Edmonton Oilers. The Boston Bruins are already 2-0. and Players or teams are off and running, and you see this. Let's go check out the AHL lines quickly here and then get to it. So uh, lines for us remain the same here at the NHL level. Those plus threes all around looking good. Malone, Marodi, Griffith, your top line in the AHL. Benson, Lavoie, Gambardella in the second line. Kuffner, McLeod, Russell, Maximov, Quine, and Safin round out the bottom six. Now, I, I had my own questions within the franchise mode episode one the other day about Ryan Kuffner and like what the situation is with him. Guess what? He's actually a UFA playing on the Edmonton Oilers Farm Club Bakersfield Condor. So in essence, he is signed to an AHL contract. Same with Keegan Lowe and I believe same with Brad Malone. So that is an interesting thing to keep track of is those guys are signed to AHL deals, not NHL deals, whereas Seth Griffith, a guy who signed a deal with the Oilers, is here on a 725 deal. All right, let's get this going, right? That's what you came for, is you came for the start of the season sim. So let's get into the Edmonton Oilers hockey. We'll go the first five games and see how things roll for our Edmonton Oilers, you know the lines, you know the players, you know what's going on. Let's get through four Eastern Conference games and then a Central Division opponent in the Winnipeg Jets to start the year with four games on the road against the Devils. We turn the tide and win that one 3-1. We then go into the off-break, win 5-4 against the Boston Bruins. All right, I'll take it. 3-1 loss to the Rangers and then another loss there and this now the pivotal breaker make or break. But before we get to that, my friends, let's go check out the draft class. You will see a little bit about it. Atu Ratty in there is a high elite sniper. Then you've got Brendan Byrne and you've got a couple guys that we are currently scouting. You're getting a little bit to know about them. Dylan Gunther of the Edmonton Oil Kings projected by the game in the 21 draft class to go right now 10th overall and then get down to it. Let me see if I can find a little bit more detail on who's looking good for us. You see Gunther there at medium elite, two ticks, so probably a top six forward. Philippe Wall, low elite. You've got a top six forward, two ticks, and Lowenstein Coven. And you've just got a bunch of good computer-generated guys until you get down to Zach Terry, who's a top four medium potential. So right now, there's not much we need to know about these guys. So we'll hold off on making any judgments until... We get a trade offer for Tyler Benson. Mm, second round pick for Tyler Benson. Good way to recoup it. But Tyler Benson 
in there in the AHL at a 78 overall. A guy that could very easily come in and replace Joachim Nygaard if he gets injured. So we will easily decline that trade. I won't even put any thought into it. But right out of the gate, the Edmonton Oilers, after starting 2-0, have lost three straight and now find themselves 2-3 and three on the year. Nugent Hopkins, four goals, one assist, five points. So you got to think, where's Connor McDavid in all this? Clefbaum's got five points. You've got four points for Dry Settle. The Yamamoto, Neal's got four points. McDavid's got four assists. Barry's got three assists, two points for Jones. And really, just everybody's getting points. But uh, the Oilers struggling realistically, to produce enough offense to win hockey games, and that's not a problem we're used to. So maybe the issue is not so much offense as it is the goaltending. So let's flip over, check out the goalie numbers. Mike Smith, 906, 3.0 goals against average, and Mikko Koskinen, 905, and a 3.675 or 67 goals against average. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to cost you. But for instance, if we go over to, say, Dallas, you look at their goalies, goals against. Uh, you look over here, it's the same thing in, mm, I guess, same thing for Alvis Miller's looking, but Jonas Corpusal is looking good. You look at both goalies for the Colorado Avalanche. We have cranked up scoring. Scoring is going to be higher than normal this season, so keep that in mind, right? It's, the goals against average isn't exactly going to be the indicator, probably more so is save percentage when it comes to things for the Oilers and the Bakersfield Condors. The Condors, who have five games under their belt. Seth Griffith, who has seven points to start the season. Kind of keep a watch on what's going down here. Cooper Rody six points. Evan Bouchard, four points. Malone in there with four points. Gambardella with three. And then Maximov and Lavoie with two as well. And those are the guys you want to see succeed. Benson in there as well. McLeod with hope points, Broberg with hope points. We want to see all those guys get some points and get going. So we'd like to see that. Condors are 2-2-1 two, two, and one after the first five games of the season. So let's keep going and uh, get things rolling down here to the end of October. There is a total of six games to be played to the end of October. We'll get to November 1st against the Blackhawks and see what happens here. 3-1 win. There we go. We like to see that. Our goalies only allowed a couple goals. 5-3 against Pittsburgh. Back in the win column. Then a loss there against Washington. Against Nashville. 2-1 win. 6-3 win against Chicago and a 5-3 loss. So we're playing pretty much balance, balance, balance in the lineup and, uh, well, in the score sheet as well against other teams. So you quickly go check here. We can kind of show you what's going on. Nugent Hopkins with 13 points. Connor McDavid up there with 10. Yamamoto 9. Neal's just having a heck of a year on that fourth line. And I know there were some questions in episode 1 about getting rid of James Neal. But you look at that. 9 points production in 11 games. That is worth the contract in game. Maybe not in real life. But in game it absolutely is. Tyson Berry with 8 points. 7 points for Leon Dry. So Gaetan Haas up there with 5 points. Yes, Puliarvi. Has five assists, but nothing else really going on in the goal column. And Ethan Bear still pointless to start the year. So this is where we can kind of sit here and tinker a little bit, right? So let's go see what the effects of the Edmonton Oilers tinkering a bit with the lines would be. So we'll get uh, Alex Chase on up there with McDavid and Nugent Hopkins. And you see how all of a sudden that generates a plus three with that top line. So that was kind of a backup plan I was waiting to use. Yes, Puliarvi down to Yamamoto and Dry settle then Nygaard with Turris and Zach Kazian. Kazian with three points, Turris with three points, Nygaard with two points, nothing fancy going on there. I'm going to try and flip around Bear and Jones, just see if I can get them on their offside, set up those one-timers a little bit better. You see the four-man power play, we're not concerned about that. But what you do see is the fact that you could probably move up James Neal of the first power play unit and really create something effective on the top unit. Pugliarvi up there on the second line. And maybe I want to move in a guy like Kyle Turris to the second power play unit and see what he can do instead of Gaetan Oss, who's getting those five points to start the year. Chase on on there as well. He fits well. Yamamoto doesn't fit, so... There's a lot of guys that don't fit this power play very well, and I don't know, is it worth taking Yes Pugliarvi off the power play for a guy maybe like Tyler Ennis, who adds a little bit more fit and could add a little bit more scoring punch. So we'll see 
what the effect of those changes are. We'll uh, quickly get to, uh, I don't know, let's get to the 20 game mark here. Things are going all right. We'll go another five game chunk though, just to be safe, because we don't want to really screw the simulation too much here. So Chicago, I'm going to see what goes on here against Chicago. That's going to be key. Three, two, OT loss. And right here, now the trades get a little bit more ridiculous. Tyson Benson, a third and a seventh to upgrade to a second round pick from the Dallas Stars. That's, again, an easy decline. Our first OT loss of the year. And Adam Larson now injured until November 9th. So we'll edit the lines manually. We got time. I'm not trying to force time or anything this t this year around. So we'll just take our time and fill it in. So Darnell Nurse, we're not going to move him up. We'll get uh, Chris Russell and see what the effects of a Chris Russell in that role is. So you see Chris Russell, by moving Caleb Jones up, you can maintain the plus three. Okay, we'll take that. We'll move Caleb Jones up and allow Ethan Bear to play with Chris Russell. Caleb Jones, who has two goals and two assists in 13 games. We're not minding that too much, except for you see the offense from the defenseman other than Barry really isn't coming for the Oilers so we gotta find that somewhere and hope it works so let's see how the simulation goes 4-1 after the Adam Larson injury game 7-5 and 6-3 and loss that's tough Julius Honka on waivers from the Dallas Stars I'm not gonna take a chance on the kid you know what that's uh we don't have exactly room on our back end for more defensemen so we will decline that one even though that's probably a bad move on my part and we are now suddenly Seven and eight and one on the year. Not simming well at all are the Edmonton Oilers, and that's not good news for us when it comes down to things. So Adam Larson, we will get him back in for uh, Chris Russell. We'll see Caleb Jones didn't do much of anything. Went down in overall or went down in uh, plus minus rating. So we'll get Jones back there, protected with Bear. Bear who had. One goal and one assist in that time that we were waiting for him to pick up. And suddenly, yeah, the defense has started scoring a couple more goals. Nugent Hopkins, you see here, 18 points in 16 games played. Connor McDavid, only 14 points. Alex Chason now up to 11 points. Puliarvi with 7. Drysaddle with 9. And Kyler Yamamoto with a total of 11. And is there anyone? Okay, well, you see here, we can not do that, unfortunately. Can we mess this around? We can't. So can you get James Neal? Maybe give him a little bit of an expanded role here. And that does nothing for us. So that really sucks. Gaetan Oss, six points. Flip these two. Okay, that suddenly solves the problem. All right, all right. Gaetan Oss, six points. Kyle Torres, seven points. Get James Neal up there with Joachim Nygaard and see what the effects are in the lineup. We'll move Chase on back down and give Pugliarvi some first line time once again and see if we can just jump start this Oilers lineup a little bit, right? Is we're going in five game chunks, so we're giving them some time to figure it out, but we still haven't found what exactly gets this lineup going 100%. And I mean, we'll figure that out as we go along. It's not going to be a uh, 20 game in and you know exactly what you've got to click, but uh, you sure wish it. You sure wish it was, right? Seth Griffith with 14 points in 13 games. Evan Bouchard with 13 in 13. That's looking good. Brad Malone, Tyler Benson, Cooper Rohde, Dmitry Samarukov all in there with 10 points. Joe Gambardella. Ooh, look at Raphael of all looking good. My goodness, 8 points in 13 games. Kirill Maximov, same thing. So everybody in the AHL seems to be scoring enough points, except for a guy like Broberg, Safine, and McLeod really not getting the job done as much as you would like to see. Broberg really struggling to adapt to North American hockey here in NHL 21. The Bakersfield Condors, though, 7, 5, and 1. So we'll focus on the goaltending here. After we get through another five-game stretch, get to the 21-game mark of the season, or I guess we could go to the 20-game mark and look at the quarterly uh, review for the Edmonton Oilers. But we'll go one more game, try and speed this simulation up just a little bit. Amateur Scout is calling. It's November, so we don't have to check scouts for another month yet. 5-2 win there. Suddenly we're above 500. 9-8-1. You like to see that. First game against Calgary here is going to be a big one. 5-4 win. And then against the Golden Knights, an 8-2 loss. And here is one of those examples of NHL 21's trade logic being a bit broken. I'm going to give up a starting goalie, 
potential. I'm going to give up a second round pick and a sixth round pick just to get Carolina's second round pick this year. I don't think so, Carolina. And after an 8-2 loss, we are 10-9-2, and or 10-9-1, I guess. And again, same thing, straight across, just give me a player for nothing. And now 10-10-1 after 21 games to start the year. The Oilers in fifth in the division with 21 points, far away from a, not really far away from a playoff spot. We're only two, one point back of a playoff spot, but uh, yeah, then that becomes the question. The Central, a much, much tougher, tougher division. So let's quickly go see what's going on in the draft class situation. We haven't checked that in a while, so we can find out and see what's going on. Ratty in there as a high elite. You've got Kuka as a medium elite. Tyler Wong is a medium elite. So who else is looking really good in terms of guys we should probably keep an eye on, right? Those are the only guys that are really looking like anything right now. You see a couple guys going up the depth charts in terms of being scouted. Keegan Yoshi over there in the uh, Rogo BK system. And there you go. He's a goalie. Keep that in mind. Then you've got Cole Sillinger, high top six, a couple medium top six forwards, and nobody really on the defense that we need to keep in mind as of yet. Gems, busts, this is always something you got to check out. And yeah, no gems or busts as of yet in terms of things, so we'll keep that in mind for now and hopefully find some guys along the way in terms of assigning the scout. Let's see if we can get our scouts out there looking at some more players. You see he's out there in a character assessment role. Uh, we really don't want you doing that, but we will go scout specific players. See if we can get a book on here. I guess you could go with Stan Coven. We've already scouted a little bit, so let's get some other guys within the system here in the 56, 60, 70 range in the WHL and see if they uh, can produce anything for us. And right there, that's exactly because I forgot to update the scouting assignment. That is how simple it is. So. Let me get this going. Potential in comparison, potential in comparison, and get those guys added to his assignment, and away we go. So that's the NLA. Do I want anything else in the NLA? Do we have anything out of the NLA? Not really any special players in the NLA, but we'll go quickly scout a 204, a 301, and these guys and see what they can bring to the table in the system. Although they're all going down, it looks like Russia. This is a big one every single year. you got to really be on top of scouting in Russia. You see Datsuk there. We'll scout him. He's 17th ranked in the CS scouting. Listen, and Varlamov will get Gonchar in there as well and update that assignment for right now. That should be good unless we need to go over to... Where do we have any other... Do we not have any other scouts in Sweden or anything? There we go. There's my scout in Sweden, the SHL. I wanted to make sure we found those guys. You see Tumanen there. We'll get him going. Eklund, Gunderson, they're all on the trend down. Ahonen's not, and John Johansson's not. So we'll scout that, and we should be good for now. All right. Let's review some stats, make some upgrades to the lineup if need be, see who's kind of jumped, started their season, or got their season off to a worse start. Tyson Berry. 18 points in 21 games. Alex Jason with 17. Clefbaum now up to 14. Yamamoto up there with 14. And Dry Settle there at 13. Ennis and Turris both with 13. James Neal with 13. Gaeta Oss with 9. Joachim Nygaard with 9. Nurse with 8. Puliarvi with 8. Kazian with 7. You see how it's all kind of working. So it's all starting to come together for the Edmonton Oilers in the points department, but we're just not scoring enough. We're just not getting enough goals. We're not getting enough goaltending. And that means I've got one last thing to do once again. Go to propose trade, find my right winger, and see if somebody is looking for a guy named Josh Archibald. And still yet, no trades available. So you could look into it a little bit further, right? You could look at a Matai Blumel who we haven't signed yet at Asset and still... No trades to be found for those two guys combined. So that's interesting there. You go to the farm club, I guess, what we're going to do. You look at the lines. Yeah, the lines are working fine. The AHL, yeah, you know what? Things look like they're going to be working 
12 points for Benson, 8 for Lavoie, 12 for Gambardella. The offense is working in the AHL. Legas and Bouchard down there getting the job done right. Bouchard 16 points in 16 games. Broberg now with 2 points. And realistically, you could probably be looking at moving. Yeah, see, that does nothing. That's the tough part. So that's a really tough go when you're the Edmonton Oilers trying to get something going. So move Bouchard down here with Broberg and get a plus one. Keegan Lowe and William Lagason gives you a plus one on the top pair. So let's see if that impacts anything for a guy named Philip Broberg. But you look at this third line, right? Our second best centerman centering Safin, Quine. Yeah, I uh, love Quine. Pfft. Why I second guess myself there, and Maximov with those goals. So we'll keep it the same. Last thing we have to do: check the goaltending stats and get right back to the simulation. I hope you packed your popcorn because we're going a long ways in this one. Seth Griffith there, the goaltending. Let's see how it's going. Anton Forsberg six three and one, two eighty three goals against average. Stuart Skinner maybe to knock Condors fans shock, not doing so well, but. Uh, Hey, what are you going to do? It just is what it is. Miko Koskinen, 8-4-1. Mike Smith, absolutely struggling. 443 goals against average. So maybe that's where we really have to look at upgrading our goaltending because it's no clear starter over uh, backup in terms of overall. 83 Koskinen, 82 Smith. So let's see if we can go out of our way, find a trade for Mike Smith, and, uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe a guy like Matai Blumel. Yeah, Matai Blumel would be a good idea right there. See if he can get going. Use him as a trade chip and find a trade. Still no trades to be had. If we end up having to part with a draft pick, I'd like to get one back. So I'd maybe give up a sixth rounder here in 2021. And still no trades to be worked out at all. <sighs> That sucks. So again, let me see if I can go to goalies one last time. Add to that and find trade via the open trade block. You see Mike Smith, we can get fifth and sixth rounder for him or we can get a fourth rounder for him. So we have no strategy to go out and acquire goaltender for the limited cap space we have. That is the problem. So for right now, it's kind of a hands are tied. You understand now Ken Holland's problem. And we just continue to move along in the season as Ryan Nugent Hopkins progressing as the best scoring forward for the Edmonton Oilers this year in NHL 21. The guy is apparently puts up points in no matter what sim you're putting up. So against the Ducks, a 7-4 loss. Again, another big goaltending loss there. Then we bounce back with a six-goal effort. Lose 5-2. Against the Kings, again, 4-3. And against the Vegas Golden Knights, a 6-5 win. So we're just not getting anything strung together, right? Win, win, win. That was our last big win streak. Then we go loss, loss, win, loss, win. Like, it's just we're not putting anything together of substance here. And that's going to cost us coming into Christmas. So we'll pretty much probably get into Christmas. And then we'll reevaluate what the Edmonton Oilers have to do to succeed. So against the Dallas Stars, a 3-2 loss. That one feels a little bit better. Let's get to the draft class. I want to see how it's stacking up here. It's looking better by the day. Now you got Felino looking good there in the top six. You've got Kuka and Wong still is the only really well-scouted guys. You've got a couple guys in the, the Russian leagues and nothing really coming together. So we'll let the scouts keep working and see what they can determine. A2 loss again there. Stuart Skinner for a fourth and a seventh. So the trade offers continue to get worse as we go along here. Second rounder for a third rounder and Tyler Benson. I don't think so. There we go. There's two wins in a row. Can we make it three, three wins in a row? Okay, here we go all of a sudden. Lightning in a bottle. Get it four. Get five. Five wins in a row. And the Edmonton Oilers are suddenly rolling. Let's go. Leave the Lions alone, 17-16-1. and one. Alex Chase on for a third, a sixth, and two sixths. I don't like that deal. You know what, Alex Chase has been a key member of the Oilers this season. 17-17-1 and one after that little hot streak to get us going. Tampa Bay 
26 and 8 on the year. Connor McDavid just went into hyperdrive, 42 points in 35 games played. All of a sudden, we've got a new leading scorer. You've got Nugent Hopkins there with 41. Chase on, yeah, suddenly, yeah, here's what we're talking about. This is why we're keeping this guy 36 points in 35 games. You've got Barry with 30, Dry Settle with 29, Yamamoto with 29. Cleftbaum with 27, James Neal with 22, and then the depth guys all in there contributing lots of points. Pugliarvi with 13 points. You've got Kazian down there. Like everybody's got at least seven points in 35 games, but we can't get the puck to stay out of our own net. So we're going to have to get creative. And I don't know, maybe you guys want to suggest some stuff to me here late in this episode to figure out how we're going to get the goaltending issue solved. But you look at Chase on up there, get him a chance to fit with Connor McDavid once again and see if we can really get things going. Because James Neal, he's had 22 points, get on us all of a sudden up to 14. And you see Kyle Turris, no big difference there. In the AHL, how are things progressing? Brad Malone, 24 points. Cooper Marodi, 23 points, looking good. Seth Griffiths with 26. Tyler Benson with 20. Raphael Lavoie has now already grown to a 70 overall. He was a 69 to start the season. That's awesome. 18 points there for uh, Raphael Lavoie. Joe Gambardella, 22, 21 points. Brian Kuffner not doing much. Ryan McLeod not doing much. And Patrick Russell not doing much. Alan Quine, can we actually flip these two? Oh, we can't. That is the unfortunate part there. So that does us no good. Maybe flipping, yeah. So that takes away. We'll move McLeod down, see if he can find a better fit within the lineup, I guess, here on the fourth line in ice time and ice minutes to go along with, I guess, the AHL kid line. You see DeHarnay there. Oh, seven points. Sam Rukov with 16 points. Playing on the third pair in the AHL. Heck yeah. There you go. Broberg up there. Evan Bouchard getting it going. So we'll move Bouchard back up there with Legison and we'll get that going to see if they can get some bigger production happening for those two. Nothing really affecting that. That takes away our plus three. So Bouchard's still not a fit, but this head coach of ours does not like Evan Bouchard at all. So it's a good thing he is one heck of a talented kid and can continue to produce despite that. So there we go. Let's get through the year and then get into 2021 in the next episode. I've already kept you for 32 minutes. Guys, again, appreciate you if you've hung out this long. I haven't done franchise mode this long without it being a live stream in my life. Let's keep that in mind. Tampa Bay Lightning, and then we go into the Winnipeg Jets on... Uh, on, what should we call it? Seth Griffith is fully healed. What is Seth Griffith's injury? I don't know. Nobody ever updated me. 17, 18, and 1. Vancouver. Need a win there. It's an OT loss. 8, 7. A loss against the San Jose Sharks. And then the Winnipeg Jets. A 5, 4 win to close out the new year. 18, 19, and 2. The Oilers to start, or I guess end, 2020. We won't be starting until January 2nd, more than likely. But let's take a look at the stats one last time, see what the goaltending situation looks like, and get used to what we're going to have to do to solve it. 39 points in 30 ga in games played for Chase on, 37 for Dry so 35 for Yamamoto. Like, we are getting the offense. This is not a problem for the Edmonton Oilers, but you look at the minus ratings. We're just not scoring enough goals to keep the pucks out of our net. Caleb Jones, Ethan Bear, a sieve of a pair, I guess, defensively. Really looking not so good. Eight points, but both minus seven, minus 11. That's really hitting hard. I don't know. I'm at a little bit of loss. I expected with that plus three to sim a little bit better and be able to use that a little bit more effectively. We're 38 points. I guess we're only five points out of a playoff spot. Keep that in mind. The goaltending stats, I did promise them to you, so... Let's go take a look at those goalie stats and see what's going on. Maybe it's time to call up one of the kids and insert him into the lineup. You see Koskin in there with 13-11 and 2 record. 368 goals against average. But Mike Smith absolutely struggling this season in net. I mean, not, not unexpected for certain people, right? But just kind of 
go over to Bakersfield here for a second and give you the options as to who we could potentially call up to maybe take out minus nine, Joachim Nygaard on that third line. You've got Cooper Marodi who could fill in, but he's listed as a centerman. Tyler Benson, the left winger, probably your best bet. And Ryan McLeod, who is now a 73 overall, progressing well. Ostap Safin up to a 69 with five goals and two assists. And Kirill Maximov up to a 71. So things are looking good in the farm system. And yeah, you see there Dmitry Samarukov, 19 points in 30 games, and now up to a 73 as well. So the minor league lines. Getting a little bit better as time goes on here 30 games into the NHL season, AHL season as well. And really, is anyone growing? Yes, Pooley Harvey, 79 overall. So that's nice to see. He's up, growing a little bit, and a plus 10 to his mod. So that's good to see. And in terms of the AHL in the system, guys, Tyler Tulio up to a 56. Matai Blumel now at a 62. And these are the guys I've already talked a little bit about growing a bit, Stuart Skinner growing a bit, and you see him Bouchard's gained a little bit playing 23 minutes and 15 seconds a night on the ice. So those are the only guys to grow so far. Guys, it's been a solid start to the year, right? And I guess right now we're going to go into the home stretch the last two months or month and change before we get into the trade deadline on February 25th. So guys, we are partway through the season. A disappointing effort out of our Edmonton Oilers out of the gate. Not so much out of the top line or the top two lines and even not out of the bottom lines. We just can't find a way to solve the goaltending and that is where I will turn it over to you. I will show you the cap, pay, cap space conundrum because we're going to have to extend some guys. We're going to have to extend Nuge next episode. We have a total of just under 300,000 in cap space. So let me know. What would you do to solve the Edmonton Oilers issues here in this franchise mode. Guys, I'm Tyson, the Stalin ATV. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will catch you in the next one.